There is currently a absolutely massive sale happening right now on the Nintendo eShop. And seeing as it's absolutely terrible to navigate, I decided to go through the hundreds of sale games and pick out a few of my favorites. As always, not only will this list have a range of different prices, it will also have a ton of cozy games, some of which I've spoken about already and others that I've never mentioned on this channel. But before we get into the list, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you love all things new and cozy on the Nintendo Switch. And yes, I'm ill, but the sales wait for no one so let's get into it first up is a series of games i'm not sure i've ever talked about on this channel which is honestly surprising because i feel like playing these games was a literal turning point in my gaming journey and that's the portal collection it's currently on sale for just over eight pounds and you get not only the original portal game but the second one as well these are games which i love with my whole entire heart and Portal 2 is probably one of my favorite games ever made on any console. If you've never played Portal before, I can't tell you a whole lot about the story without spoiling it. But suffice to say, you find yourself in this weird place armed with something called a portal gun. This gun allows you to place two portals and if you walk through one of them, you'll come out in the other. And the whole time you're doing each of these levels, you have to face a sassy robot that just doesn't seem to like you very much. I know the puzzle premise sounds simple enough, but the puzzles that have been made are so, so creative and such an unbelievable amount of fun. And if the puzzles aren't enough, the story that goes with it that you uncover piece by piece as you do each level is absolutely fantastic. Now the first portal just kind of has a single player mode slash campaign, but the second game actually has two modes. You can play single player and go through that story, or you can also give the co-op mode a go too. This has its own separate story and is equal parts as fantastic as the single player mode. To me, the playing in co-op is really where this game shone, as even though the puzzles were fantastic when there was just one portal gun, the chaos of puzzle solving brought with two guns was just fantastic. Not counting Mario Kart Double Dash, this was mine and my little brother's first real go at co-op gaming. We went to the same school, so I'd literally remember leaving school each day, locking eyes with each other, doing the nod of approval that we will be gaming when we get home, and both speed walking as fast as we could to get to the Xbox. <laughs> To me, the whole Portal franchise is some of the best puzzle games out there. I'm so glad they've come to the Nintendo Switch. And I'm so glad you can pick this up for literally £8. Then we have Breath of the Wild. Now this is on sale for only a few more hours as of the posting of this video. So if you want to get it before Tears of the Kingdom for 30% off, now is the time to do it. Then for just over £16, we have the Oregon Trail. Now, as I am but a mere Brit, I have no nostalgia associated to this game. However, I've been told that if you are American, you most likely played this when you were at school on one of the OG Apple computers. The game essentially sees you pack a wagon, pick a leader, and set off on a journey to Oregon to begin a new life. It's kind of a survival-like game where not only do you need to manage things like wagon repairs and resource management, you also have to navigate the hazards that you might encounter, forcing you to make some very tough decisions. These hazards can be anything from blizzards, bears, snakes, and even dysentery. Now this is a remake of the original and much like the original game, the quests themselves are based on real historical events. So basically, not only when you play this game are you having fun, you're also furthering your historical education as well. So it truly is guilt-free gaming. Then for just under £12, we have a game called Wobble Dogs. I feel like you'd struggle to play this game and not laugh at just how wacky it is. This is a 3D pet simulator, and if you immediately thought, ooh, maybe this is a bit like Nintendogs, then no, it, uh, it most definitely is not. You basically have to raise a group of rapidly mutating dogs. As time goes on, their evolutions get increasingly more wild. Like for example, when they age, they literally pupate, AKA they form a cocoon and chill for a bit before they come back as a different version of themselves. You can kind of control which evolution form they take with what you feed them, but I honestly don't think you could predict a single thing that happens in the game. <laughs> 
Not only are you in charge of the dogs though, it's also up to you to create the perfect habitat for them by decorating the area as well. And the way the dogs move and interact with all the objects just makes Wobble Dogs all the better. Half the time you don't even have to play the game, you can just sit and watch the chaos happen in front of you. It's definitely a great game if you need a laugh, and I think this price point is a lot better than the original. Then for just over £16, we have Return to Monkey Island. This is a point and click adventure game packed with tons of character, and once again, will make you laugh a lot. Don't worry though, you don't have to have played the original Monkey Island game to enjoy this one, but if you have, you will most definitely see plenty of easter eggs and references to the original. The puzzles are brilliantly designed, a lot of fun, challenging, and will also somehow make you laugh all at the same time. And we all know that some point and click games can have some pretty obscure solutions, but there's no need to worry as there's actually a hint book in the game so you don't even have to go and look up a walkthrough. Return to Monkey Island is also fully voice acted making it incredibly hard to put down and is honestly a great game to pick up for its current price. Then for just under £25 we have the 51 Worldwide Games game. I always feel like there's a second game at the end. Now admittedly the name of this game is not that creative because all it is is a game that contains 51 games from across the world. But this is actually a family game night staple of mine, as not only does it have all the board games you know and love, it also has a great few added extras. It has things like Ludo, chess, checkers, a ton of different card games, but also things like Pong and bowling as well. There is genuinely a game for everyone on this list. And one thing I really like about the game is that each individual game comes with a complete guide voice acted on how to play it. The guides are animated, super comprehensive, so it makes sure that even if you've never seen this game before, you can play it and have a great time. You can also either play single console multiplayer or if you have multiple consoles, you can play multiplayer like that as well. They even have a free version of the game on the eShop so that you only need one copy of the game to play with a friend with two separate switches. The only slight downside is if you're playing four player on a single console you only have 10 or so games you can actually play as a group of four but for this price you can't go wrong i've had many nights of playing ludo with my whole entire family and it being an utter mess in the best possible way it's a great game to add to your collection if you love playing with friends and family then we have one of my all-time favorite cozy games unpacking the whole premise of the game is just unpacking it makes no sense why i love this game so much as i genuinely hate folding clothes and putting them away in real life i don't know about you guys but i'm definitely the type of person who has a laundry chair but then when i work at my desk i just move the laundry pile from my chair to my bed and then when i sleep it moves back to my chair my life is just an endless cycle of moving my laundry pile but I know I'm not the only one, okay? There's other people who also live like this. <laughs> I just wish putting things away in real life was as satisfying and as fun as they are in unpacking. But the real beauty of the game isn't seeing what random places you can put items in, but it's more how much story the game can portray just by unpacking someone else's belongings. You basically get to see an entire person's adult life where you get to learn more about them each box you unpack at a time. And I'm pretty sure me included, everyone who has played this has cried at some point during it. It's so, so good. I recommend it so much. Then for just over six pounds is Cozy Grove. I won't spend too long on this because I've mentioned this a ton, but it's definitely one to pick up if you enjoy playing games for an hour or so each and every day and making it a part of your routine. This game is based on in real life time and sees you take care of the requests of the spirit bears of the island. I feel like this game for me is something I definitely play while doing something else like watching reruns of my favorite show or having a movie on as the quests are more or less just fetch quests but that's one thing I feel like reviews don't capture not every single game I want to pick up I want to have my full undivided attention on all the time so games like this definitely have a place in my life and that doesn't make them any less great. The music and the art style always makes me feel so calm when I play it and especially when you're coming to the end of one of the bears stories 
the dialogue can be so so moving the one thing i truly love about this game though is that it doesn't punish me for not being logged into the game for a while i truly love animal crossing but one issue I had is when I've been busy and I haven't been able to log into the game for a few days or a few weeks because of real life stuff, the villagers made sure to make you feel really bad about that and I wasn't a big fan. But in this, they don't even mention it whatsoever. You just carry on where you left off, which I think for a casual game is something I definitely needed. Then for just under four pounds, we have Grizz or Gree. I'm going to say it both ways because it just makes it easier for people to look up. This is yet another cozy staple that I cannot get enough of. And it's more of an experience as a game as it has no dialogue, no voice acting whatsoever, just the beautiful music that goes along with it. In this game, you help Grizz to navigate the world through sorrow. And as she grows emotionally, so does her ability to navigate the world, unlocking new abilities and new paths to explore. The part that really got me hooked though is the soundtrack. It's truly beautiful and brings each area you explore to life, making the game almost impossible to put down. Throughout the game, you will come across things like small puzzles and platform areas, but these really don't feel frustrating whatsoever. They just provide a great way to spice up the exploration. And to me, this is the perfect game to play right before bed with my headphones in, as it's such an immersive experience. Then for $1.99, we have Jenny LeClue. Everyone so far who have picked this up cannot believe you can get this on sale for such a cheap price. You follow a young Jenny who's a wannabe detective as she embarks on discovering the truth after her own mother is accused of murder. This has an incredible story, plenty of puzzle solving, and this version is fully voice acted as well which is crazy for the price i definitely recommend it especially if you only have a few pounds to spend on your nintendo switch then we have persona 5 this is on sale for a ridiculously low price of under 40 pounds this price is so low considering that the average playthrough of persona 5 is around 100 hours not the completionist playthrough the average normal person playthrough length this is one of my all-time favorite rpgs and sees you play as a teenage japanese boy who gets falsely accused of a crime and given a criminal record. You then find yourself at one of the only schools that agrees to accept you, and you make friends with other students who have been equally as screwed over by evil adults. Soon you make it your job to band together and make sure the adults pay for their crimes. To do this, you basically break into their brains and force them to feel so badly about the things they've done, they end up turning themselves in. The game is split into two elements. First, you have the life sim element of being a school kid. You go to the classes. You even have to answer questions in the different classes you attend. You also have your out of school activities and you can even choose how you spend your evenings before you have to go to bed. And then you also have a combat side. Now, this is more of what happens in the adults minds or they call them palaces in the game. And although at times the combat can seem like a lot, it is most definitely worth it. The life sim elements make sure you fall in love with each and every one of the characters. And for each of these fights and each of the adults you take down, it means something so personal to each of the characters. So when you win them, you get to see all the positive ramifications and the ways it benefits all of your favorite characters. And don't worry if you've never played a Persona game before, this has been my very first and it's easily one of my top 10 games on the Switch. Although just a disclaimer, definitely go and look up the trigger warnings before you buy this. It's definitely an adult game just to make sure you're all good with it. Then we have Disney Dreamlight Valley. The base version is now just over £18. Do I even need to say any more about the game at this point? But one thing I will quickly just cover, if you are wondering about the state of this game on the Switch right now, it's better, but it's still not fixed. Switch players are still experiencing some crashing and lagging throughout the game, and it still very much feels like the game is in early access. Now, the most recent update did add Olaf and Mirabelle, but there is one thing to know if you're looking at picking up this game right now, especially if you're giving it to a kid. Microtransactions are now a thing and are now super easy to make. They introduced a new premium store, and with that, a little page where you can buy moonstones 
for real life money. So it's now super easy for someone to spend real money in Disney Dreamlight Valley. So make sure you take the appropriate precautions if you're giving this to your kid. Then for just over £10, we have a little to the left. This is such a fun game, but it is short. It's basically a puzzle game based around sorting and arranging household items. And it is so, so satisfying. Well, until the cat comes and messes it all up. <laughs> Despite all the puzzles being based on household objects, they all felt so different and unique. And there were only really a few occasions where I got stuck to the point where it was slightly frustrating. There are hints, but these weren't always useful for some of the puzzles. One thing I do love though, is some of the puzzles have a number of different ways you can complete them. So if you're a completionist, you can go back and try and figure out all the different solutions for each of the same puzzles. And even when you finished all the main puzzles, the game will send you new daily puzzles to keep you coming back for more. The final game on my list is one of my all time favorites as well, and that's No Man's Sky. You can currently get it for just under 30 pounds and is definitely a cozy game, okay? I know people question it, but it is. It allows you to fly, land on planets, and explore the unique wildlife and ecosystem of individual planets in an ever-growing space. And the game lets you fine-tune literally every setting you can imagine, so you can turn the game into a non-deadly, beautiful space exploration game if you want to. And although at first it can be a little bit daunting with the menu system, it offers a really good in-game tutorial story that really teaches you things bit by bit so especially if you have all the settings on to make sure that you don't have to worry about your, like your oxygen levels or temperature settings, it can be a really chill and really fun experience. That's everything for my top picks from the sale. But if you're looking for some upcoming games to get excited about, click this video here. I'll see you next time. Bye.